Hi, thanks for tuning in to the Property Apprentice podcast. My name is Debbie Roberts, one of the founding owners of the company. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'm going to be talking about, um, now that we've got a bit more clarification as to what it means for landlords and tenants at level three, you know, as we're moving forward through level three, hopefully not for too much longer before we get to level two, as long as everyone keeps behaving themselves and staying at home as much as possible. Right, you don't need me to tell you that you've had every man and his dog on television saying that right so anyway some of the new announcements the things that I mentioned in the first podcast which was talking about level four and level three a lot of those things are still in place so the rent freeze that's still in place all of those sort of things um, nothing has changed there the inability to evict a tenant or you know give a tenant notice and things like that none of that has changed I'm going to talk now about the things that have changed and have been relaxed a little bit now that we're alert level three and again um, more information will be posted on an ongoing basis as and when it becomes relevant on the tenancy website which is tenancy.govt.nz there's a special section in there relating to COVID-19 what landlords and tenants need to know so if you've got any further reading that you want to do then um, that's a really good resource to go and have a look so now at level three tenants are allowed to move to a new house and they are allowed to use the services of moving companies as long as the movers still adhere to their physical distancing rules and um, they also need to keep records for contact tracing purposes as well. Routine inspections of rental properties still can't take place unless it's an emergency situation. In other words, if the landlord needs to confirm that emergency maintenance is required. So routine inspections can't happen and any emergency situation, you still need to have the tenant's permission to do that. My advice would be you know you need to double check that your tenants well and that you're well before you go there too if you're going to manage the property yourself so my advice would be at level three to err on the side of caution see if you can arrange with your tenant to do like a facetime call with you to show you the issues and potentially even record the online meetings that you've got the video calls so that you can see for yourself what issues are and what needs to be repaired and then make a judgment as to how urgent that is. So maintenance can only occur in emergencies or with tenant approval. So this means that you can now use the services of plumbers, electricians and tradespeople. They are allowed to work on and inside rental properties as long as the tenants have given permission and had the required amount of notice. And as long as the tradies plumbers, electricians and other tradespeople as long as they maintain the social distancing as per the current level requirements as well. For example, we had a plumber at our house today because our hot water cylinder at home sprung a bit of a leak so you know we had a plumber come around um, we had to stay away from him uh, they made quite clear that we needed to maintain that safe distance so you are allowed to get help from professionals uh, when needed so there's also a comment here saying on the tenancy website we recommend landlords arrange for professional services to clean or undertake maintenance of their vacant rental property so that that means that you are allowed to pay a professional to go around there and do maintenance work on your rental property at level three, especially if it's empty, right? Because then you don't have to worry about social distancing or anything like that. If your tenants are in the property, obviously different rules apply. Like for example, house cleaners are not allowed to go around um, and work on people's homes at the moment under level three conditions. Now, if you've got a rental property that's vacant and you're looking to find a new tenant, you cannot have open homes. So property managers are not going to be able to do open homes where multiple people come and view a property at the same time. The way that viewings of vacant rental properties can take place is especially if it's vacant this is a lot easier the property manager can actually make appointments with the potential tenants who want to come and have a look at the property so if the property is tenanted the landlords need approval from the tenants and the tenants can't be on the property 
when the potential new tenant comes to view. Okay, so there are quite a few restrictions there. During any viewings, physical distance must be maintained and anyone who's in the property that doesn't live in the property needs to keep contact with surfaces at a minimum. So uh, an example of that would be that you can't just go around willy-nilly opening up all the cupboards and things like that. Anything that does get touched during a viewing needs to be wiped down with disinfectant afterwards. And it's uh, there's also a guide there that says in-person viewings should be limited to two per day per property. So there are still some restrictions in place, um, but it is at least possible to start showing people through your rental properties now instead of just doing the virtual tours, which we had to do at level four. People are not allowed to travel between regions for the purpose of viewing the property. You are allowed to travel between regions if you're relocating to that region. So like, for example, if a tenant is moving from Auckland to Hamilton, um, then they are allowed to travel into regions, but you can't have a potential tenant drive from Auckland to Hamilton to have a look at a property to see if they want to view it. So in that situation, it would have to be done as a virtual tour. Final inspections of a rental property can only take place if the tenants are not home and only with the tenant's approval or once the tenants have actually moved out already. So tenants should take photos of the property's condition before they leave and certainly landlords should take photos of the property at the, at the first given opportunity that they've got to go and inspect that property, do the final inspection. So hopefully that um, gives you a bit more information. You know, things have become a little bit easier on the property management side. So we're not in, the, in quite as strict a conditions as we have been previously at level four. Now you can certainly advertise your property to be rented, moving in between rental properties is allowed as long as they maintain that social distance and now tenants can even use the services of a moving company to help them do that so that's great news for those of you who have been waiting to be able to rent out a current property that's vacant maybe has been vacant the whole time through level four and also if your tenants are ready to move on to somewhere else as well they've now got the option to do that too so get in touch with your property manager and make sure that they're aware of the new rules. I'm sure that they will be. It's their job after all. Um, if they're not aware of these new rules, then I would suggest that you might want to find yourself a new property manager. Okay, so um, thanks for watching today's podcast and we'll keep you up to date with changes as and when they happen as quickly as we can. Thanks for watching. If you want some more free resources, free information, head along to our website, propertyapprentice.co.nz. We've got lots of free resources there, eBooks, um, videos, things like that. So pop on, have a look. And if you haven't done so already, feel free to come along to one of our online training sessions, a Beginner's Guide to Property Investing. And you can register for those online training sessions on our website as well, propertyapprentice.co.nz. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you at the next podcast.